everything after the race. The idea of creating a championship like this uh, arose when we identified a great opportunity of transferring the like the philosophy and the principles that um, have made the Spanish Formula Four Championship as uh, so great and so successful into the next step. So we thought the, there was a possibility of creating something great, uh, taking into consideration that our priorities have always been to try to limit the, the budget, to try to look always uh, for the fairness of the, the championship as our first priority and to keep the teams involved in the day-to-day -day, uh, management of the championship. We started completely from scratch, so there was nothing done. And then, because of this, everything must be prepared. For sure, the first thing that you must offer is a calendar and a, and a car. So we started by contacting uh, circuits and we contacting our potential suppliers for the car. And once we had like the green light from, from them, is said, okay, we have something to offer. And let's create a real product. Let's make the presentation and then we will refine all the, all the details. The thing that attracted me to compete in Euro Cup is that it's a new category, it's a challenge for every team and every driver and so I wanted to take this opportunity at 100% and I want to grab it at the maximum. Our first priority was the calendar and then uh, we started to go in, uh, into, into detail with the, the features that we wanted to, to apply on the car. So um, since the, the timing that we were managing was very tight and we wanted to have a, a top of the edge car completely different from what it was in the market by that time, we spoke to, to Tatus, so they being based on, on products that was currently in, in their portfolio, even in the market, let's say at least the base, uh, to make the li team's life easier to try to be in time for the beginning of the championship. They decided to use what it was created already, plus a bespoke uh, package. So in the end, we have something completely that is completely different to what it is now, but being based on something that was already existing. Obviously, this championship is, um, I think, a really competitive one. A new one that has really good characteristics, especially on the car. Really fast car that brings us a lot of motion during the races. And I think it's a great way to gain experience and lo looking forward for the um, future categories, such as F3, which is a good step forward. Quite a lot of them. First of all, creating uh, a car that it's, it was different in such a short period of time. It was very challenging. Uh, we were very tight with the, in the terms, the delivery terms, the design, then the, the production, etc. That was quite challenging for tattoos. Um, then the FI certification was not easy to get. We received the support from the Spanish Federation for this and we are very, very, very thankful for that as well. And for sure the creation of the regulations, it, it, has, not, it has not been easy at all. Uh, there, there are so many tiny details that we have to, to check. Uh, we will try to do it like the best way as possible. For sure uh, this is something new and we are all there and still learning. And uh, we are still facing a lot of challenges. So we are not for sure, there is a lot of margin to improve, so everything for sure is not done. Yeah, basically we uh, decided last year uh, to enter Euro Cup 3. We think it's a very uh, exciting championship. Um, it's a good step up between uh, Spanish Formula 4 and also good preparation for the FIA F3, for example. 
think there are some really good uh, circuits on the calendar, like uh, for example here in Spa, but also Formula One tracks like uh, Zandvoort, Monza, Barcelona, and some really exciting Spanish tracks like Valencia and Jerez, for example. This was not that difficult that because we, thanks to the F4 and the experience in F4 Spain, we had already created uh, long-term relationships with, uh, with very important partners uh, such as uh, tire suppliers, brake suppliers, oil suppliers, etc. And they were so excited about the idea of uh, supporting this project and they jumped in with no hesitation. Well, this is a very important series for us in the single-seater scenario. Uh, we are partners of Formula 4 series all across Europe, including, of course, Formula 4 Spain, and this is the next step in the ladder for youngsters in their motorsport career. So it grants us a great exposure and great visibility for Hancock brands. The philosophy behind the tire is exactly the same. We're talking about the same construction. Of course, the car is more powerful, the tires are bigger, there is more aero force, there is more downforce, so it's totally a new environment for the driver. And tires are a part of this uh, puzzle. Uh, we always have um, development ongoing, and the development um, is focused on single-seaters, touring cars, and GT cars. Uh, we are of course talking of a product which is customer racing, it's not confidential. So it has to be uh, performing on every single uh, single seater all across the world. So no matter if it's a Formula 4, a Formula Regional chassis, or a Formula 3 or a Formula 2 car. So uh, the technology behind it's always the same, with some minor tweaks according to the car and according to the market. Well, about selecting the teams, we want the teams to be involved in the day-to-day -day of, the, of the championship. So the idea of creating this was coming from, from the teams already. Like, okay, we, we know the market, we have uh, structures in upper categories and we really think that this could work. The ones that were already confirmed by the, by the moment of the presentation, there was not a selection process because it was like, a, what was it? They were there already. that we wanted to transfer like from Formula 4 and the way of doing things in Formula 4 was the regulation. Throughout the years in Formula 4 we were like refining the, the regulations, uh, always listening to the teams, listening to their necessities and their priorities because they are in the end they are the ones that have direct contact with the with the drivers and the ones that suffer the regulations as they are. So we we try to transfer like the, not a copy paste, okay, but to, to make the regulations as, as similar as possible to the ones that we had in Formula 4. For sure this is another category, but I think that the, the most important values are uh, are applying in both championships. For example the testing limitation which is something very it's something that is important to us so the, the budgets don't go so high and we keep the control on this as much as possible uh, tire regulation etc which are very important not only for the for the sporting fairness of the, the championship but uh, but to the, like the finance fairness let's say for all the drivers um, this is something that we, it was our priority and this is something that we have always tried to, to, to put 
on the table uh, as a priority um, for the creation of the, of the regulations. For this year at least, is to settle down properly, to create a proper base, and as long as we create something that is stable throughout the season and teams and drivers are happy, for us we will already be a success. For sure we always want to grow and to be present like as a, as a real option for a driver coming into this, into this level. We think that's what, what we have managed, the goals that we have already fulfilled uh, so far uh, are, are, are there. Like, uh, we think that we are um, uh, reaching our goals already and uh, for, for me it's currently a success. Let's see how the season goes, but uh, we, we, we want to, to improve and we want to grow. I always wanted to be a driver. I followed a bit my dad because he started a go-kart. When I was uh, in Canada, where I'm born, uh, he was racing a bit and I always wanted to do the same. So he, he made me start go-kart at three and uh, like really races at nine, 10. So yeah, I always, always wanted to be a phone driver. So I'm keeping following my dream.